Welcome to the city of Chicago and welcome to the Big East Conference season opener. A big pat on the back to the schedule makers because they took the two teams that battled to a one point championship game last March and he matched them up here in game number one. It's the nine and two Marquette Golden Eagles take on the 10 and two and 16th ranked DePaul Blue Demons. And hi again everybody along with Patricia Babcock McGraw. I'm Dave Bernhardt. Welcome to McGrath Phillips Serena and welcome to a rivalry. Well, not like many others. These two teams have gone at it year after year after year. It's a little bit different this year, especially in the season opener, because I have to believe coming into this game, it's all about expectations. Yeah, well, I think you could say that so far DePaul is meeting expectations, and Marquette is probably exceeding them a little bit. DePaul was picked to win the Big East. They came through a brutal non-conference schedule with a 10-2 record, and they ranked 16th in the country. Marquette was picked to finish 9th in the Big East, but they also had a very good non-conference schedule, 9-2 playing very well, impressing a lot of people under new code coach uh, Megan Duffy. Let's check in with the third member of our announcing team. That's Megan McEwen. Last year, Marquette swept DePaul on the regular season. However, the Blue Demons did come back and beat the Golden Eagles in the Big East Tournament. Flash forward to this year, DePaul looks very similar, having only graduated three starters they returned to. Marquette, on the other hand, looks completely different. The Golden Eagles graduated all five starters who accumulated over 8,000 points. They also have six newcomers and a new head coach in Megan Duffy. They were picked to finish ninth in the Big East. However, they've exceeded expectations coming into today's game with the second best record in league play. Trish and Dave, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Megan. Let's take a look at that new look starting lineup for Marquette. Nine and two in the season, as Megan said. Three players in double figures. Leading the way in scoring is Selena Lott. A lot is Marquette's most experienced player back. She was preseason all big E. She's leading this team in scoring almost 15 points per game. And also an assist, Dave. Five assists per game for Selena Lott. And on the other side for DePaul, the Blue Demons return two starters, as Megan said. Kelly Campbell, Shante Stonewall, they're all big E's picks coming into the season, but add a third member in there as part of the big three. Yeah, the big three, Kelly Campbell, Sonia Morris, and Shante Stonewall. Stonewall leads this group 18 points per game. Sonia Morris, the best three-point shooting guard on this team, 33s on the season, and Kelly Campbell just stuffs the stat sheet every night for DePaul. She leads this team in rebounding and assists. Is one of the best assist-to-turnover ratio players in the country. And there is Doug Bruno in his 34th season as the head coach at DePaul. He picked up his 700th victory a few weeks ago. He is one of three coaches actively coaching with 700 or more wins at the same institution. Harry Ferretta from Villanova and Gino Oriema from UConn are the others. Our Big East season is ready to get underway. Laura Van Clunen along with Shante Stonewall. And it will be the Golden Eagles first under head coach Megan Duffy. Marquette winners of five straight. We see Deja Church number three. You saw her in the starting lineup. She has started at times. She was out with an injury and then didn't lose her starting spot. Deba Kelge had come in and started about six games in a row, but Deja Church will start this conference opener for DePaul. Now, in past years, Marquette used to be a lot like DePaul and push the ball up the floor, fast basketball, but they like to go inside right away there, inside to Van Clunen. Lexi Hill gets a good look from three. Away with it is Isabel Spingola. Spingola from Chicago, played her high school basketball at Whitney Young High School in the city. Two straight times inside, now two straight chances, and both come out of there. Wow. The putback from Van Clunen after two misses from Chloe Morata. Really, really good rebounding team in Marquette. And you saw how many chances they got there. They just love to pound it inside. Speaking of inside, that's where Shante Stonewall is in. She is fouled. Marquette first in the Big East in rebounding margin at almost a plus nine per game. And there is Megan Duffy. She's in her first season at Marquette. Was at Miami, Ohio for a couple of years. And Megan taking over from Carolyn Keeger, who moved on to Penn State and all Megan Duffy did in her two years at Miami was pick up two 20-win seasons. First time since the 80s they've gone to back to back with 20-win years. And a couple of WNIT appearances too as well for Megan Duffy at Miami. For you longtime college women's basketball fans, you'll remember Megan Duffy, the former Fighting Irish. She was in the hunt for the uh, National Player of the Year back when she graduated in 2006 and still maintains a very close relationship with Muffet McGraw, which we will get into later, but big mentor for her. 
Deja Church creates havoc. There's our first turnover of the game. Kelly Campbell with it now. Leads the country in assist to turnover ratio at 6.0, and that's how many assists she averages. That's ninth in the country. Held with the miss inside, the rebound to Murata. One freshman in the starting lineup. She has it now. That's Jordan King. There will be five freshmen coming off the bench for Marquette. And two turnovers without a shot here in the last 60 seconds. The Paul's pressure defense can get you playing fast in the backcourt and still fast in the front court. They force you to do things that you don't want to do and into mistakes. Already a couple of those for Marquette. Sonia Morris, her first shot of the game. Morris checks in with a 16.9 point per game average just behind Shante Stonewall's 18.1 for the Blue Demons. Again inside, and this time it's held that gets a hand on the ball. Deja Church was there as well. Now there's no secret here. 6-2 Lauren Van Clunen, 6-1 Chloe Murata. We're going to pound the post. This is Murata. Off the inbounds, a little soft hook shot for Van Clunen. He has all six of Marquette points here in the first couple of minutes. Marquette doing a great job of getting high percentage shots. One and done for DePaul. The Demons have missed all four shots from the field. From the corner, Selena Lott. Buries the two. That's what happens when you do such a nice job of establishing yourself inside early. Those outside shots open up. What a preseason first team selection. Held to the basket. Paul still looking. Paul getting shots at the basket. They just are not connecting. Izzy Spingola was in rhythm and just missed everything. Lauren Van Clunen. Six points, six of the eight for Marquette. She has made all three of her shots inside. She's just getting fabulous position, really establishing herself, taking her time. Her footwork's on point. She's had a nice start to this game. Deba Kelch has checked in for DePaul. She had started six straight games in the place of Deja Church. She replaces Lexi Hill. Morris has it knocked out of her hands by Lott. He fall with just two points. We're at the 640 mark of the first quarter. The strip from Morris. And the break is on to Bakelja. Still nothing from the field for the Blue Demons. 0 for 6 now. And that is typically where DePaul will hurt you the most. They'll make a nice play defensively at the other end and really hurt you in transition. Spingola stopped by Stonewall and travels. Just such active hands by the Blue Demons. You saw the steal the possession before by Sonia Morris and Shante Stonewall. Well, that is one of her fortes is just her quickness defensively, feet and hands, and tying up the ball there, creating another turnover for Marquette. Deba Kelja will go to Morris. He falls third of the nation in scoring at over 88 points per game. And Morris will get her first two. So good at creating for herself that quick first step. Really Sonia Morris has elevated her game offensively between her freshman and sophomore year. We've become accustomed to seeing these two teams playing in the 90s, both of them. That is not the pace that Marquette will play with this year. McElge will rip it out of there. Stonewall. Spingola will run ahead to Lott. Around Church for the layup. Six point lead at 10 4 for the Golden Eagles. Baseline drive by Kelja. Boy, some, some good looking shots just rolling off the rim for DePaul. Kelly Campbell saw that one all the way. It's a three on one. Arquette, great job of getting back.
Three second call. Some out of sync action here for DePaul offensively. Marquette doing a great job on defense and they are pumped up. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Here are the final seconds of last year's championship game. Shante Stonewall just converted a three-point play for the one-point lead. Natisha Heideman for the win. And DePaul would claim the Big East Tournament Championship, the automatic bid into the NCAA Tournament for their 17th straight year. Marquette would also go to the tourney. But as we mentioned earlier, after Marquette won the first two games of the series last year, DePaul got the upper hand in the final one. Well, this is an emotional series anyway. This is a big time rivalry between these two schools separated by only about an hour and a half or so. And with last year being the way that it went during the regular season with Marquette sweeping DePaul, getting a win here on DePaul's own floor, that was, that was a very emotional, high charged game between those two teams. And the fact that it came down to a last play like that was really only fitting. A very exciting end to the Big East season for both of those teams. DePaul comes into this game 10 and 2, Marquette 9 and 2. As we heard earlier, the two best records in the Big East Conference. But there's four losses combined. But how about these four losses? Yeah. First of all, for Marquette, losing to ranked Mississippi State after being up five late in that ball game in an overtime loss to Northwestern. Okay, DePaul's two losses is here. Get this to UConn and to Oregon State, and all those teams are right now is ranked first and third in the nation. Yes. Uh, both of these teams have played a challenging schedule. Uh, DePaul in particular, and, and as a matter of fact, there are uh, six teams in the Big East ranked in the top 75 RPI, and, and DePaul and Marquette are, are among the, the best. DePaul, number eight in the country. I mean, they just really had a, a brutal non-conference schedule. Marquette at number 49. So both of these teams really challenged themselves and tested themselves in the non-conference season, and they are hoping that bodes well here in the Big East. Megan McEwen was eavesdropping on Doug Bruno. Megan, what do you have? DePaul head coach Doug Bruno not happy at all with his team during that last timeout. Laid into them yelling, we have to fight down low. At the moment, Marquette out-rebounding DePaul 11-2. Coach Bruno wants to see better crashing on the boards going throughout this game. Well, there you go. The plus nine here in the first five minutes of this game. Marquette, that rebounding advantage. That's what they've done all season long. For three, Jordan King can't get it. The other thing, too, is Marquette has an 8-2 to two advantage in points in the paint, so they are really using their size advantage. Diva Kelger with the miss. Stonewall cannot save it. DePaul now 1 of 10 from the floor here in the opening six minutes. Well, that is what Marquette wants to do down at the other end. It's really pounded inside. They have some good post players. They like to work the ball inside out, Megan Duffy says, and that's what opens up outside shooting three-point shots with them. Marquette makes a little over six threes per game. DePaul, second in the country at almost 12, made three pointers per game. Atia Anderson just into the game, nearly turns it over. In fact, she does. Anderson, a 6'2 senior from Bridgeville, Delaware. Now, she will be the only non-freshman coming off the bench for Marquette today. Lexi Held is back in for DePaul. Shot clock approaching 10. Kick out to Held. She doesn't miss many of those. Lexi Held buries the three from the right wing. You can just see when she gets in rhythm and gets that ball in the pocket, 
She's going to knock it down. Well, outstanding ball movement and court vision there by Dee Bakelja to find it wide open, Lexi Held. Held will pick up that personal foul. Take a look here. Things were kind of jumbled up here, a little crowded down in the paint, but Bakelja, really nice vision there to find Lexi Held. Unselfish basketball, sharing the basketball. That's what this DePaul team is all about. Number 10 there in the powder blue uniform is Claire Capus, 5'11 freshman from Shawnee, Kansas. Turnover off the inbounds. The couch was setting up for the three. Morris, good look. And Murata the other way. Oh. And this is what DePaul will do to you. They'll just get you out of your rhythm. Yep. Oh. Every pass has to be thought about so carefully against this DePaul pressure defense. However, Ludeman still just in single digits. That turnover is the eighth here of the first quarter for Marquette. They will not be able to keep up this pace, yet they look at the board and Golden Eagles are up three. Here's Kelly Campbell, a triple double threat at any time. Marquette wants to push a little bit with Locke. One of the goals today for the Golden Eagles is limit the number of default possessions. And they have done that thanks to their rebounding and here patience on the offensive end. Now they are not afraid to use the entire shot clock. They're really looking for openings inside. They love to screen for each other. They are methodical and patient in the offensive set. That was the ninth turnover of the first quarter. Nine turnovers in eight minutes. No opening for Bakelja. Held. Tough shot. You don't see too many mid-range jumpers from about 10, 12 feet out. Lexi Held. One of the better ones in the nation at that. That's one of her specialties, and you saw how fluid that jump motion was. Capus for three. Hitting a board hard was Lott. Selena Lott, 5'11", junior from Troy, New York. Three-time Big East honor roll selection, and we are just now hitting the conference season. Another freshman in, freshman from Peoria, it's Cameron Taylor. She'll replace Murata. Marquette bringing those freshmen off the bench. Here's one of them right here in Jordan King, played her high school basketball, Hananiga High School. Held the tip steal. Oh, how about that? Oh, my. And here's Stonewall. Campbell for three. Coast to coast was Taylor, a little out of control, but Marquette will keep it going as we approach the one minute mark. Shot clock is at 10. In and out for King on a three. Paul shooting just 20% from the field, Dave, and that's going to make Marquette a little nervous. Yeah, they've got a lead here, but DePaul is getting good shots at the rim. They are just not connecting, and when this team finally does start to hit some shots, watch out. Deja Church back in. She'll take it to the rack. Still unable to finish. Um, another shot that DePaul typically makes. And that driving lane was open for Deja Cage. Bakelja with a step back. And it will be Marquette ball. Well, we have seen here in the opening 10 minutes how these Golden Eagles crash the boards. 18 to 5 rebounding advantage here in the first. 
Check this out. Just these traps are so relentless by the Blue Demons. Oh, yet another opportunity. I mean, this is where DePaul is golden, Dave. When they put on that pressure, create a turnover, they almost always score in those situations, and they have come up empty on a lot of those opportunities. Lot with the shot clock off. Anderson works on Stovall. Line drive shot will go for Altia Anderson. Clock winding down. Stonewall. And that's how our first quarter will come to an end. Six of the last seven years, one of these teams, if not both, have scored in the 90s. We're not there. We're not at that pace. But this is a pace that Marquette wants. Get it inside, get a lead at the end of one. That's what they have, plus three Golden Eagles. It's just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Welcome back to McGrath Phillips Arena as Marquette holds a 12-9 lead over DePaul, headed into the second quarter. One of Marquette head coach Megan Duffy's biggest points of emphasis headed into this ball game stopped DePaul from shooting the three ball. The Blue Demons averaged 12 made three-pointers a ball game. Megan Duffy says, first and foremost, she prays DePaul doesn't get hot. However, if they do, her team has to identify shooters early in the possession, and they have to maintain DePaul's pace. Not to mention, Coach Duffy says Marquette needs to limit DePaul's second chance opportunities. The Blue Demons average nearly 16 offensive rebounds a game. Dave, Trish. Well, Megan, so far, uh, Coach Duffy's prayers seem to be working because DePaul is one of 10 from three-point range. Second chance points, zero for the Blue Demons. Uh, this is one of the coldest shooting starts I've seen out of DePaul in a long time, 17% from the field for DePaul. The good news is, though, they are getting open shots. They are getting good looks. They're getting high percentage opportunities at the basket. They are just not finishing. Coach Bruno telling his players, hey, the, you got, got the green light, keep shooting. He doesn't want anybody to be tense or hold back. That's exactly the opposite. So his players are gonna be still attacking the rim. A nine point first quarter. And all of a sudden the Blue Demons are getting to double digits. 10 seconds in, Shante Stonewall with the bucket. 11 first quarter turnovers for Marquette, yet they lead. Jordan King will give it up to Lott. This is Spingola. King, preseason freshman of the year in the Big East. Nice pass. Great inside position from Cameron Taylor, 6'2 freshman from Peoria, Illinois. Marquette with six players on their roster from Illinois. Stonewall. Shante Stonewall, I think the message was pretty clear during the timeout. We need that ball going up. 
from the 6'1 senior. Marquette there making an error on the inbounds, giving DePaul another quick opportunity, but Shante Stonewall responding well to whatever Doug Bruno said during uh, the quarter break there. Two quick baskets for her, and, and she is that kind of player, Dave. She can score in a bunch and very quickly. Shante Stonewall, three-time Big East honor roll selection, currently on the Big East honor roll for this week. Of course, new honor roll and player and freshman of the week will be announced tomorrow. DePaul looking for its first lead of the game, and there it is, Stonewall again. Seven points here in the quarter for the Blue Demons. They all belong to number 22. King hounded by Morris. Nothing there for Lott. 11 seconds to play with here for Marquette. DePaul leads this series 44 to 27 here at DePaul. It's a 22 to 6 advantage for the Blue Demons. Opening it up for King. There's Stonewall with the block. But Taylor will clean it up. Really relentless players down low, looking for every opportunity on those offensive boards. Great fake from Hell. She has her seventh point of the game. Murata running the floor. Chloe Murata's first basket. We're tied at 18. And the pace picking up, and Stonewall already in double figures. She'll get a chance to add another one here. Boy, and, and she is intense. She is excited, kind of stomping her feet there after that big bucket. But you got to feed the beast to Paul, recognizing who has the hot hand. Shante <laughs> Stonewall pretty jacked up there. She says, give me that basketball. She is feeling like she can score from absolutely anywhere. Shante Stonewall, preseason this year. She finishes off that three-point play. Preseason Ann Myers Drysdale Award watch list, the Cheryl Miller Award watch list, and the Naismith Trophy watch list. She's given to Paul its biggest lead of the day. Stonewall with 12 of the 21 DePaul points. And she just scores in such a variety of ways. We've seen her hit a three, jumpers, posting up. I mean, she can do a little bit of everything. And then what she provides to Paul defensively, we've seen her block shots. She's just a complete player. King is able to beat the shot clock, but Marquette's able to win the boards, and that is Chloe Murata. And DePaul had two of their best rebounders down there with Deja Cage and Shante Stonewall right there in the vicinity, and yet DePaul or Marquette still crashing those boards, still getting those second and third opportunities for offense. This is their game, and DePaul is going to have to figure out somehow how to keep these Golden Eagles off the boards. I think Chloe, Chloe Murata has some Marquette bloodlines. Our brother Cam, he's in his first year as men's basketball program assistant after having played at Marquette. Her dad, Mark Murata, played at Marquette, where he was a three-time academic All-American. And the grandfather, her grandfather, also played at Marquette. So I guess Chloe had no choice. <laughs> she pulls her team within one. Church looking to take Murata to the basket. Deja Church, the transfer from Michigan, had it roll out. Now Marquette a chance to take the lead. In deep. And that may be going against Cameron Taylor. Or is it just out of bounds? Taylor here to use her left arm to kind of make some room for herself. And that's how it will go. How about what this Marquette team has done so far this season, what they're doing here? You know, this is a new coach in Megan Duffy, graduated all five starters last year. Re really a brand new bunch and, and uh, players who were kind of biding their time, waiting for their opportunity. And just really coming out with a big statement here in this first half so far. Well, I think it made for an easier buy-in. Here's a steal. We'll get back to that point in a moment. Church going to look for three and finds it. 
scoring off of mistakes, especially in the backcourt, that is a specialty for DePaul. 16th ranked team in the country, its biggest lead at 4, 24-20. So saying with Marquette, you had these players who said did not get much court time, so it's easy to buy in when coach says, okay, you're gonna be playing a lot this year, let's do it my way. Yep. Brand new look, new opportunities. That rim gave a little bit, not enough. And it is physical down low. You know, speaking of mindsets, DePaul's mindset this year, especially in the non-conference season, now that we're early in the conference season, was early games do matter. Last year, DePaul thought they cost themselves a higher seed because some games got away from them early in the year. And that was a focus this season for DePaul, is every single game matters, and it matters in March what you do in November and December. Absolutely, and that, that really spurred this team to dig deep when they were uh, facing some adversity in some of those non-conference games to finish out strong. 10 and two, ranked 16th in the country, and Sonia Morris will get her second basket. DePaul with a 15 to eight scoring advantage here this quarter. Make that 17 to eight. They built this lead to six. So after scoring nine points in the first 10 minutes, DePaul in the first four and a half has 17 here, but bucket inside. Lena Lott get her third basket. Kiara Dahlman has checked in for DePaul. Dahlman wearing number 42, transfer from Iowa Western Community College. Dahlman has it now. Church again. Oh, the block came from Anderson, but there was a foul on the way there. Credit to the Marquette defense, though, because they are really forcing DePaul to work deep into the shot clock, something that this team doesn't typically do, playing some good, solid, straight-up defense, forcing DePaul into some tough shots and not really giving a lot of lanes into the paint, really guarding uh, closely on the on the perimeter, making DePaul really work on every offensive set. Deja Church at the line, 5'10 junior, started all 34 games last year for Michigan. In fact, averaged 27 minutes per game, about nine points per game. Had a bad ankle, missed three games in the middle of the season, middle of the non-conference season. So will get one of two there. Spingola will push it. And that will be a foul on Kelly Campbell. I know that was a foul on that play, but Kelly Campbell has been asked to do so much defensively, guarding inside as an undersized guard. She really is such a utility player for the Blue Demons. And then Shante Stonewall at the other end really taking over the scoring, DePaul has a five point lead, 27 22. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do.
midway through the second quarter. DePaul leads at 27 to 22. They're looking to piggyback on their Big East championship win last March, 74-73 over Marquette. And once again, the Big East women's basketball tournament presented by Jeep returns to Win Trust Arena in downtown Chicago. And that's coming up in 2020 on March 6th through the 9th. All session tickets for the conference tournament are now on sale starting at just $50. For tickets, visit www.bigeast.com slash WBB tickets. You're watching DePaul and Marquette on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. Dave Fernhart, Patricia Babcock, McGraw, and Megan McEwen here with you at McGrath Phillips Arena along with a good crowd. You always get a good crowd. I don't care whether you're playing in Chicago or Milwaukee when Marquette and DePaul hook up. Well, DePaul always gets a good crowd here at McGrath Phillips Arena, but Marquette likes to bring their fans down from Milwaukee. So we have a full house, energetic fans. We can't get a better atmosphere like this in women's college basketball. Megan McEwen was hustling over to the Marquette bench. What would you hear? Golden Eagle head coach Megan Duffy making breaking the press a point of emphasis in that last timeout. She told her team they have to have a sense of urgency as soon as they get the ball out of the basket, try to break the press early on. And at the moment, DePaul has forced Marquette into 13 turnovers. Yeah, that's pretty remarkable that Marquette is this close as Altia Anderson misses that first free throw. We saw her as you were speaking, Megan, saw her discussing things with her freshman well, I, I can't say point guard because Jordan King is really playing the off guard, even though uh, she's rotating between the off guard and the point guard. So talking to the freshman and talking her through some situations. But one thing that Marquette has done this year, they played a variety of styles. They've been playing the teams that have gone up pace. In fact, they defeated Belmont as Diva Kelger will get that bucket. Defeated Belmont in their last game out. And Belmont coached by former people assistant coach and Doug Bruno protege, Bart Brooks. Diva Kelch's basket on the other end, her first points of this game. I think both of these coaches, Megan Duffy from Marquette, Doug Bruno from DePaul, are, are really strategic. You talk about the non-conference and seeing different teams, seeing different quality teams. Doug Bruno are really adamant about uh, scheduling the toughest competition that he can find for his players. Megan Duffy trying to get her players a variety of different styles to compete against. Young players are trying to get them as much experience as possible. So a lot of thought going into who you're going to play and, and uh, what kind of teams you're going to play in the non-conference. And uh, that, that speaks to kind of the, the preparation and, and how important these coaches think the non-conference is for the Big East. The ball was able to play in the WNIT this year. They ended up in the semifinals out in Corvallis, Oregon, to play Oregon State in front of about 6,000 fans, and they fell to the third-ranked team in the country. But that just goes to, to what you were saying about being able to get into that tournament and being able to travel to some very, very difficult places. You know, speaking of that, most recently, DePaul, maybe not their most recent game, but within the last couple of weeks, fell to UConn despite outscoring UConn double digits in the second half. Very impressive performance against the top-ranked team in the country. That was an outstanding rally by the Blue Demons in the second half. And here comes Lexi Held, her second three. She has 10 points, and DePaul's lead is stretched to seven at 32-25. Here is that concern again for Megan Duffy getting over that half court line, breaking down that pressure. Still an issue for Marquette. Narell Lubo just into the ball game. She gives it up to the right side. Spingola into the paint with the left hand. No iron. Here's Stonewall. We'll go to the Golden Eagles. See how versatile Stonewall is, though, blocking that shot down at the other end, getting the ball and traveling the entire distance of the court, trying to be a playmaker as well. Shante Stonewall coming to DePaul as more of a, a, a bigger player, a forward, and Coach Doug Bruno saying, hey, we need you to have some guard skills too. She really worked on her dribbling, her ball handling, her outside shooting, and, and she really is from A to Z that complete player. And she, I have the most fun watching her at the, as the point of this pressure in the backcourt. She does so much with her long frame, her long arms, 
You just cover so much territory. She is just a monster as the point of this press. And it's one of the reasons that DePaul's pressure defense in the backcourt is so successful. Here comes Lubo on the dish. The block from Dahlman. Numbers for DePaul. Held the bounce to Bekelja. Kiara Dahlman getting a block on one end, running the floor on the other, and she will draw the foul. Well, Judd Bruno is so excited about Kiara Dahlman. We talked about her coming to DePaul and, and what she brings to the table from her JUCO experience and, and the fact that she's a big body, six foot two, and you saw her block a shot down there, gives DePaul kind of a presence that they haven't had much in recent years, that big interior presence. And against a team like Marquette, comes in very handy. Dahlman from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Shot 61% from the field last year at Iowa Western. That was after a freshman year that saw her, saw her knock down 71% of her shots. Thirty-three twenty-five. 25 DePaul keeps inching that lead. Now up to eight. Outscoring Marquette 24 to 13 in the second quarter. Nice pass. Nothing there for Lott. King is stopped. Shot clock under 10. Anderson, Dalman on her. And with two seconds left in the shot clock, Altia Anderson will head back to the free throw line. That really does a nice job of spacing the floor to create those inside paint opportunities for players like Anderson already with 18 points in the paint for Marquette. But they're just so, so patient and they're not that crowding that paint area and really giving their big players a chance to establish position and work the paint have an opportunity to get themselves to the rim. I, I like the way they, they approach that. They know that that's a strength and they really play to it. Tia Anderson keeping her team in this one with free throws. She's made five of them. Mikelja. Now a two on one for the Golden Eagles. And the return pass to Lawton. It'll go in. The bounce came from Jordan King. Just like that, an eight-point lead is cut in half. Marquette defending the arc. Now watch that shot clock. Took seven for Held. Threads the needle to Stonewall. Wow, did you see that one-handed pass? That was spectacular by Lexi Held. Loose ball, there's Church. Campbell on the floor, and that goes off. And that's the thing about Shante Stonewall, you can give her that kind of pass. Really just fire it in there, and she's got such soft hands that she's gonna catch that basketball, but wow. You said threading the needle, and that really did just get in there at just the nick of time. Beautiful basketball. Shante Stonewall, 12 points here in the second quarter. A 35-29 DePaul lead. Blue Demons held to nine points in the first quarter. Morris was asking for it. She gets it. <laughs> Kelly Campbell delivering the dime. Sonia Morris knocking down the three and a timeout Marquette with a buck 45 to play in the first half. The biggest lead for DePaul is right now at 38-29. Here are the last three points. Well, and what Shantae Stonewall does when she occupies the paint and scores inside is that loosens up the perimeter defense a little bit and just a simple ball movement there by the Blue Demons and you're finding an open shooter and you give Sony Morris that kind of space. She is gonna knock it down. She is the number one three-point shooter on this DePaul basketball team with 33s on the season. Let's check in once again with our sideline reporter, Megan McEwen. 
DePaul sophomore guard Sonia Morris has had a breakout second year campaign, averaging nearly 17 points a game and solidifying herself as the Blue Demons' second leading scorer. And to put that into perspective, Morris averaged a little under five points a contest her freshman year. And her head coach, Doug Bruner, told me she's capable of scoring that type of productivity. However, he wasn't expecting it to happen so quickly. Yeah, he said he knew she wasn't ready last year, but she's going to come up with it here. Although looking she, for a double-digit lead. Although she was still ready enough to start some games last right. year for the Blue Demons. She was impressive right out of the gates as a freshman. But she has really turned a corner and gotten to a whole different level this year as a sophomore. You know, and some of her best games have come against the very best competition. Well, she had a great game against UConn. was really a big reason that DePaul was able to cut into a huge deficit, 20-plus point deficit, and get it down to, what was it, five or six, four, four? Yeah, she had a huge game against uh, the Huskies. Shantae Stonewall at the line. She was the most outstanding player in the Big East Conference Tournament last year and it was become part of DePaul legend. She had a crucial three-point play and with five seconds to play to turn two-point deficit into a one-point lead and eventual tournament championship for DePaul. 39-29, a 10-point difference. Anderson, the handoff to Spingola, good three-point shooter. She had six threes in a game this year against Northwestern. She gets her first points in this one. Held on the baseline. Anderson on the move. There's Spingola again. And that's a battle between Church and Murata. And that foul will go against Chloe Murata. Let's look back to March once again. Shante Stonewall bringing the title home to DePaul. That was two. A free throw made it another, and that becomes a 74-73 win after Natisha Heidemann's. Desperation shot at the buzzer, clanked out. You know, those are the kind of moments that you remember for the rest of your life. I mean, what a, what a great finish to that, that game. Just an epic game between these two programs and rivals and everything that happened during the regular season last year. And what a way to finish. Final minute here of the first half. Anderson will put it on the floor. Campbell battling inside and it will give Blue Demons the ball shot clock off with 29 and a half seconds to play. And Kelly Campbell says one shot. Morris with 20 seconds left. Held with 10. They clear it out for her. Sophomore from Burlington, Kentucky. The step back three. And a whistle with four tenths of a second left. And that will be the fifth team foul on DePaul. So two free throws coming up. You could hear Doug Bruno say, really? <laughs> Doug Bruno not happy about that call with four tenths left. Anderson off the bench with seven points, five of six from the line. Not surprising that they cleared out for Lexi Held down at the other end, though. She is so good in those situations with the clock running down. I thought she got a good, good look at that basket. Good shot opportunity for Lexi Held. Six straight free throws by Anderson in the second quarter. And DePaul, after a nine-point first quarter, scores 32 points in the second 
and they lead it 41 33. They're all out here at McGrath Phillips Arena. It's the Big East Conference opener in the 16th ranked. The Paul Blue Demons lead it by eight. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. And this is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. The unanimous pick to win the Big East Conference this year, the DePaul Blue Demons lead it 41-33 at the half. Well, let's take you back to September. In September, there are 30 Big East women's basketball student athletes from across the conference's 10 member schools. They enjoyed an interactive educational professional development weekend in Midtown Manhattan. Big East Digital Network was on hand to capture the sights and sounds from the fourth annual Big East Transition Game event. For the fourth straight year, Big East women's basketball came together for a weekend in the Big Apple to focus on the transition after college. The conference welcomed in 30 upperclassmen from across all 10 schools into New York City for the annual Transition Game program. It's actually very cool because a lot of people that, you know, we play against on the court, getting to them now, it's like, wow, like, it's a total different person. I mean, it's really an unbelievable resource for these student athletes to be able to hear from professionals, to learn life skills, to talk about, you know, job hunting, resume building. I think it really sets the Big East apart. The weekend focused on life after college, both on and off the court, featuring several leaders in the industry. Big East Commissioner Val Ackerman, Executive Director of the WNBA Players Association, Terry Jackson, Fox Sports Analyst, Monica McNutt, as well as mental health expert, Dr. Alfie M. Breland Noble. I love how they emphasize the mental health. Um, I think there's such a demand for just the talk to be happening and the conversation. It goes under the rug a little bit, especially with female athletes. It's hard to find a balance sometimes between sports, school, family life, um, and even just other stuff going on in life. For the 30 Big East Women's Hoop student athletes, this program can have unlimited mileage and is an opportunity they salvage. I'm the type of person that wants answers, like, so I'm already like, where's my internship coming from? What are you going to do, Brianna? Time's running out. And this definitely made me take a deep breath, like, it's okay that you don't have everything figured out, but at least you know what you're passionate about, and you know that you have all these great skills that basketball has taught you, and more that's to come, because I'm only a junior, so it just, it just gave me, like, confidence to keep doing what I'm doing, you know, keep being headstrong, and that things are going to work out for me. Uh, it was very motivating. Um, it gave you a lot of insight from different perspectives, whether it's coaching, officials, um, owning your own business. Uh, it shows a lot that they care about after basketball. I know I talked to a lot of people that they don't have this, and uh, I'm very grateful that our conference has this for us. Sunday sessions focused on elevator speeches, resume building, and mock interviews. All of this programming for one goal, to help Big East upperclassmen transition for life after the game. The Big East is ahead of the curve. I mean, we even mentioned it on the panel in terms of the focus on mental health for athletes, but I think part of mental health has to do with uncertainty. And so to take a small part of the uncertainty that comes with graduation and kind of 
grasp it and look at it in its face and not make it the beast that it can be because it's unknown, but to have conversations and to meet people who want to be tangible resources to help these young ladies navigate the next steps. I mean, the Big East is ahead in the game. More conferences need to get like the Big East. Without a doubt, I think our coaches actually use this as a recruiting tool because it is a special program that really no other conference is um, emulating right now. And I think it does set us apart in terms of how we're pouring into the student athletes. Big East is something special. I knew that when I was a student, though I wasn't a student athlete, they take care of their own. And one of the things that I heard in on the event today was how a special this family is and what a family setting is. And so it was rewarding to be a part of it. The Big East Way, the 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University, here, here we, we do. do. Halftime of McGrath Phillips Serena and the Blue Demons from DePaul lead it. 41-33 over Marquette here in our season opener on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi in the Big East Conference. Dave Bernhardt along with Patricia Babcock-McGraw. Megan McEwen is also around. And Trish DePaul third in the nation in scoring at 88 points per game. They had nine points, nine, like single digit, nine in the first quarter. But yet we look up and they're right at that 80 point pace again. They have a way of just imposing themselves on you. I think it came down to something as simple as DePaul just started making shots. You know, they at one point were shooting 19% from the floor that shooting percentage is now to 40 percent how'd they do that with some really good defense they got some easy opportunities e easy buckets in the paint Shantai Stonewall was huge in that area she has 15 points already and Marquette has 15 turnovers but that first quarter was all Marquette they did exactly what they wanted to do slow the pace down and get the ball inside well I've been really impressed with Marquette's inside game Megan Duffy said hey that is our strength this year we may not be scoring 80 90 points per game but we are tough inside that opens up outside shots for Selena a lot like that three pointer and then Selena also scoring inside she has been tough for Marquette but then DePaul started hitting shots. Shante Stonewall seven points in the first minute of play and indeed that was Stonewall here's Lexi Held she buries a three part of her ten points in the first half and it was starting to flow the defense which was strong in the first quarter led to buckets DePaul ending up that first half with forcing 15 turnovers Blue Demons were 11 of 17 from the floor in the second quarter hard to keep this team down defensive or offensively they average 88 points per game that's third in the nation they are going to score the bucket you want some more numbers you have to wait after this break we'll come back to McGrath Phillips Arena and get you those first half stats here in your Big East opener an eight-point lead for the Blue Demons at the half Is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University. Be the difference. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. 
Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. the 72nd meeting between DePaul and Marquette and women's basketball and the Blue Demons lead it by eight at the end of the first half. Glad to have you with us here in the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi, Patricia Babcock McGraw. I'm Dave Bernhard. 32-21 scoring advantage in the second quarter and that kind of evened out the stats when we look through them through the first two quarters. Yeah, it did. And I think that threes um, were a story for DePaul, but not in the way that we are used to. They've hit only five threes in this game. Uh, this is a team that averages almost 12 three-pointers per game, which is second in the country. DePaul found other ways to score, Dave, off of its defense, off of inside scoring, uh, mostly with Shante Stonewall. So DePaul getting the job done in other ways, and that's what a good basketball team does. And what DePaul did was they closed down that rebounding margin a bit. You still see it at the end of the half, 26 to 15, but at one point it was a plus nine in the first, what, seven minutes of the game. So DePaul's pretty much played even on the boards from there. Free throws have kept Marquette in this one. You see the numbers for Shante Stonewall. She's done it all year long. She's done it here in the first 20 minutes. We're getting set for the second half here in your Big East Conference opener, a 41-33 DePaul lead in Chicago. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. And this is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Hope you're having a great holiday season. I know there's several kids in the Chicago area that had a great holiday season, thanks to the Paul Wins basketball team. While both of these teams really do a lot in their communities, this Christmas, DePaul uh, was active with the DePaul Sediment, Sediment House and the food pantry here in the Chicago area. They also did some fun things. They went to the, the DePaul Symphony Orchestra for a Christmas show. And they also, this uh, weekend, went to see the Harlem Globetrotters. And, you know, that's a natural thing for a basketball team to do. But they also have a very strong connection. One of their former players, Brittany Rinko, 
plays for the Harlem Globetrotters. And so the team went to go see one of their former players, the all-time leader in assists at DePaul, Brittany Rinko, plays for the Har Harlem Globetrotters. So that's a very cool connection. And not often that you get to do something that fun and, and to see a former player in action like that. One thing that Megan Duffy has wanted to do, it's what she's done with her, all of her teams, but what she wanted to do, especially with Marquette, is to build that you know personal relationship and you know the image she painted for us uh, they come over to their, her house the players come over to her house they put on crazy pajamas they bake cookies but it's all part of the culture she's trying to establish there yes she she says that she Megan Duffy says that she would like to maintain that personal relationship with her players that typically the assistants are, are really uh, charged to do you know of being being the good cop to the, the head coach's bad cop so to speak is what do you think of but she says that, you know, she spent many years as an assistant coach. She really liked being close to her players, having that personal connection with her players. Uh, so she, she hopes that she never loses that. And uh, she also took, uh, when she uh, took over this job, took her players to a WNBA game in Chicago to watch the Chicago Sky play. They also did some community service this holiday season at the Ronald McDonald House, making brunch for the kids there. So uh, both of these teams trying to do a lot of things that are fun together to establish that chemistry and relationships between players and teammates and then also trying to serve their community give back to all the, the people who support them during the season megan McEwen hustled back after talking to each of our two head coaches what'd you find out Doug Bruno saying, hey, this is the Big East. This is a rivalry game. We have to keep our foot on the gas pedals, and we have to keep Marquette off the board. This is fundamental basketball. We have to do a better job rebounding. Head coach Megan Duffy of Marquette saying, we need to get easy baskets. We have to limit Mar or DePaul's easy baskets, rather. We have to continue to get the ball inside. At the half, Marquette had 20 points in the paint. Well, they're going to get two more here early in the third quarter is Lauren Van Clunen, who is saddled with some foul trouble in the first half. She gets the bucket to open it up for Marquette here in the second. But the easy bucket inside, or maybe not so easy, it was a close shot. <laughs> but Deja Church will pick up her eighth point. Marquette 9-2 and two on the season. DePaul 10-2. and two. DePaul number eight in the RPI. 16th rank in both of the two national polls. Campbell. Marquette's biggest lead in the first half was 10. I make that six. DePaul's biggest lead in the first half was 10. Oh, and a cut from Lott. Nice give and go there. It was wide open. I don't know where the defensive rotation was for the Blue Demons. Lott. Goes to double figures with 10. She averages 15 a game. Church strong. She's gotten to the basket a few times today. Oh, great feed again from hell to Stonewall. Well, that's the thing. Shante Stonewall moves so well without the basketball. Always trying to find a spot where she can get the ball in scoring position. 17 points for Stonewall. She averages 18 per game. Leads to fall on that mark. Third in the conference. A little step through there by Noonan, Van Coonan. Well, as Megan Duffy calls her, she's an old school player. She can use either hand equally well. We've seen her with a hook shot already today. And she's wincing. She was involved in a little collision there. Now she recovers. She's guarding Stonewall here. Church is able to keep it alive. Second chance here for the Blue Demons with a shot clock at 10. Down to eight. All the way to the rim for Deja Church. Deja Church has been active here to start the third quarter, really looking for her shot, attacking the basket. 47-39, three minutes into the third quarter. Lot along the baseline. <laughs> Doug Bruno will point down his bench. He will get Dee Bakelja off to the bench and she'll replace Flexi Held. Held with 10 points, couple of threes in the first half. All freshman team last year, four time freshman of the week for Held last season in the Big East. Morris to catch and shoot. Running out of there is Anderson. K 
King, tough fadeaway under pressure. Oh, you've got to get that ball up over Shante Stonewall. Now the break the other way. Campbell finds a white jersey in church. Marquette making DePaul work on this possession. There's Morris to keep it alive. There's Church. How about hitting the offensive backboards for DePaul? And how about the fact that this is an undersized team, but that is part of what Doug Bruno preaches, is that if we're going to play all guards, we've all got a rebound. Steele, Campbell, ahead to Morris. We go the other way, Spingola. Anderson with the reverse. Well, Tia Anderson, 10 points off the bench. She came in averaging five a game. Sonia Morris couldn't get that first one. Here's a moment right here where you've got a senior trying to coach up a sophomore. Sonia Morris has just missed two point blank layups and the first person right in her face just now is Shante Stonewall trying to get her to calm down and say, hey, we need you. And there's Doug Bruno reinforcing that message from Shante Stonewall. Hey, we need you settle down. You're one of our best scorers. You'll get it. Don't overthink it. Stonewall battles for her own board and that little bobble results in the travel. That'll be the sixth turnover in the game for DePaul. Compared to 18 for Marquette. DePaul took the lead early in the second quarter and they have kept it at about this margin since then. Spingola, that's a stutter step. Midway through the third quarter. Preseason pick unanimously to win the conference. DePaul gets a three from Campbell. Her first points of the day. And the biggest DePaul lead of the day at 11. Marquette picked to finish ninth. In fact, they were just one point away from pick to finish at the very bottom of the conference. But that was a message that Doug Bruno sent to his team this week. Of course, the DePaul men's team with a 12 and one non-conference record. DePaul men's team was picked to finish 10th in the league and they along with Butler at the top of the men's conference standings. Doug Bruno reminded his team, hey, where was our men's team chosen? Everybody says last. Well, where was Marquette? Down at the bottom. One of the reasons DePaul has the 11 point lead. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. It's just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. 
Welcome back to McGrath Phillips Arena where DePaul leads Marquette 52 to 41 at the media break in the third quarter. DePaul ranks third in the nation in scoring with more than 88 points a game. Much of that due to the success beyond the arc where they lead the league in three pointers made so far 143 on the season. However, Blue Team at head coach Doug Bruno tells me he wants his players to make threes and also play inside outside basketball. He stresses the importance of getting the ball to the rim to create more opportunities at the three-point line, and DePaul doing just that. So far, 22 points in the paint. That's also let them make six three-pointers so far in this third quarter. Thank you very much, Megan. And that goes to Doug Bruno's philosophy of he would rather you take a three-pointer than a tough two-point shot. Now, I, I, one of the exceptions to that would be Lexi Held, who's able to create her own yeah. two-point shots. But, and Megan Duffy told us as well, you know, studying the film of DePaul, she said so many of DePaul's three-pointers come off of offensive rebounds, inside kicking it out. Well, I, I like the way that Doug explained it. He said, you know, a lot of people think that we just stand around and take threes. He says the ultimate purpose of offense is to get to the rim through dribble and pass penetration. You create more threes, he says, by getting to the paint, getting paint touches, and getting the defense rotating. And he says, you know, we, pl we recruit players who can shoot, but who can also get to the rim to keep our offense moving to create those three-point opportunities. There's the ball inside to Held. Held averaging 13 points per game. She has 12 in this one. And there's that old school jump hook from Lauren Van Clunen. She has 14. Akelja had that short miss. The ball will stay at this end of the floor. There you see Lauren Van Clunen. She is one of those players. She got some minutes the last few years. Not a lot, but obviously a big factor in this year's Golden Eagles team. Megan Duffy calling her old school like Tim Duncan. Hey, Tim Duncan. Boy, that's taking it back. <laughs> miss fundamental. Akelja knocks it down and gets knocked down. Van Clunen hook shots with both hands, good footwork, just that old school post player. And big reason that Marquette is so good inside this season. Destiny Struther in the game, wearing number 13 for Marquette. First time we've seen her in a backdoor cut from Lott. Results in another one. She had a couple of cuts here tonight. She has 12 points. Lot from Spignola and those two are two of the mainstays in this program. They've been around the last few years having some good chemistry on that play. And they've been counted on to be the leaders this year. What can you cut into this nine point DePaul lead? Lot will take it between the circles. Brother, the lob inside, and Van Clunen will win the race to the baseline, and she will go to the line. Big time collision underneath. Wow. Talk about physical. Hot Diva Kelja was really holding her own there, defending the post. Did a nice job fronting and then holding her position right there, but getting tagged with the foul. You see the front job there and denying Van Clunen the ball initially, but Van Clunen. To her credit, hustles after that basketball and now finds herself at the free throw line. About three minutes to play here in the third quarter. Both coaches moving some people off their bench. Everybody a little bit of a rest here with and Clunin at the line. We said she uh, sat out all but seven minutes of the first half with foul trouble. She has nine points here in the second half. 6-2 junior from Mason, Ohio. Super efficient inside, six of eight from the field as part of her 15 points. Held looks for the baseline. Nice Count it. Well, well, we're waiting. Tom Danaher, one of our officials, ready to give the all fist pump. And they'll give it to her. One of the things that Lexi Held has really improved on 
from last season to this season is Doug Bruno is saying that last year she was really searching for her shots off the dribble, using a lot of dribbles to create offense for herself. And you saw there, it just really only took her a few dribbles to get herself in position to take a good baseline jumper. Lexi Held just becoming more efficient offensively. Narelle Lubu with it. King, tough pass. Morris there. The tip out to King. Held disrupted it. Oh, nice pass. It came from Morris to Church. Church getting hit in the face there. Physical inside. But a nice poke there by Lexi Held. You got to keep the dribble tight to you and know your surroundings because those DePaul hands are always all over the place, especially in transition, creating yet another turnover. That is 21 on this game so far for Marquette. He followed fifth in the country in forced turnovers at over 24 per game. Marquette came into this game averaging about 17 turnovers committed. Deja Church with their 13th and 14th points. The lead is at 12, the biggest of the day for DePaul. Blue Demons trailed 12 to 9 at the end of the first quarter. That stuck 32 points on it, the board in the second quarter. Spingola tucked inside and it'll spin in for her. Second basket for the senior. Under two minutes to play in the third. The reverse from Morris. Excellent movement without the basketball. A beautiful back door there by Sonia Morris, who really needed that shot after missing the two easy layups. That had to feel good for her. She got the feed from Church. Lubo with the whistle. Just the third team foul on DePaul this quarter. Nobody there yet for Lot. And Clunan will have to come out to get it. Narelle Lubo with the ball from North Andover, Massachusetts. A freshman will get it to Spingola. Well, if you missed the first quarter, you only missed 21 points, and you miss seeing DePaul make only three of 18 shots in that first quarter. If they had forced double-digit turnovers, keep themselves in the game, and then just push it out in the third. Held on the drive. Chloe Murata checks back in for Marquette. She'll replace Van Clunen. Six freshmen on this Marquette team. DePaul, an interesting roster makeup as well this year. We talked about the two returning, full-time returning starters in Campbell and Stonewall, but half of DePaul's team returners, the other half newcomers, either freshmen or transfers. And we saw a lot of positive contributions out of DePaul's very promising freshman class this season. Little fadeaway for Moore, starting to pull out all the offensive tricks here in the third quarter. Now a 14-point lead at 65-51. Turnover differential, 22-7. to That is 15 extra possessions for DePaul. And that will happen when you have a young team. Coach Duffy resigned to the fact that this team's going to make some mistakes as they learn. Lexi held with a stop and a fadeaway. Two sweet-looking shots from a pair of sophomores the last two trips down the floor for DePaul and Morris and Held. Oh. 
Megan Duffy says, wait, this is just getting a little too wacky here with 17 seconds left in the third quarter. DePaul has boosted the lead, 67-51. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. And this is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. Sixteen point difference final seconds here to the third quarter Marquette and DePaul are travel partners that means wherever Marquette goes DePaul goes that weekend they flip flop however this weekend since they're playing each other this is the only conference game this week but here is the upcoming games for Marquette they will trade off with Providence and Creighton with DePaul on Friday the third the trip to Creighton that's always a, a tough in fact you take a look at that road for Marquette it'll be the similar one for DePaul. That's tough because you go Creighton to Providence. Two schools are completely opposite ends of the conference travel time. Then anytime you do the St. John Seton Hall matchup either way, that's a difficult one. And it's a tough start just based on the non-conference season that all of these teams here on the screen have had. Marquette is going to be in for a battle in each of those games. I was talking earlier about the conference RPI and the Big East did a great job of representing nationally during the non-conference season. Creighton, the 14th best RPI. Uh, in the country, uh, St. John's is 55, Providence 64, Seton Hall 71. All of those teams in the top 75 in the national RPI, and those are all the teams that Marquette is going to be facing after this game against DePaul. Scores from earlier today, we have four finals in the league. Seton Hall came from behind to defeat Butler in Indianapolis 67 to 62. Creighton also came from behind, one on the road at Georgetown 65 to 56, the easy inside layup comes off the hands of Cameron Taylor. Final 10 seconds. St. John's a winner over Xavier, 75-67. And Villanova, two-point win over Providence, 51-49. And there will be no extra shot unless we can get one off here in six-tenths of a second. So DePaul, after outscoring Marquette 32 to 21 in the second quarter, they outscore the Golden Eagles 26 to 20 in the third, and they'll take a 14-point lead into the final 10 minutes here in the Big East Conference season opener. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. 
a diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University, here, here we, we do. do. And this is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's bring it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. It's a double-digit lead as we enter the fourth quarter here in McGrath Phillips Arena in the Lincoln Park neighborhood of Chicago. And a reminder that the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep returns to Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago this coming March 6th through the 9th. All session tickets for the 2020 conference tournament are now on sale starting at just $50. For tickets, visit www.bigeast.com slash WBB tickets. You're watching Big East Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. Dave Bernhardt, Patricia Babcock, McGraw, and Megan McEwen with you here as we hit the final 10 minutes. continue to get the ball inside and not only that we have to continue to get great ball reversals and just take care of the ball at the moment Marquette has 22 turnovers yeah that is a little bit out of their character Megan and we've got to clean that up in a hurry here and it's tough to chase the double digit lead as Paul will get it to start here in the fourth and Deja Church will pick up her 16th point of the day Deja getting a start here today tough to chase a double digit deficit when you're constantly being pressured like this to DePaul keeping its foot on the gas here with the pressure in the backcourt. Cameron Taylor to Spingola. She has one three today now make it two. Spingola with eight points. Deja Church 16 matches a season high. Of course a DePaul career high. Transfer from Michigan. We're one minute into the fourth quarter. Campbell will bury it. Couple of threes from Kelly Campbell. Just so fluid, so easy on her shot, doesn't force anything. Kelly Campbell, such a good leader for DePaul, just sets a very calm, even kill tone for this team. King comes up firing. Blue Demons had four white jerseys in the paint for that rebound. Lexi held. Lexi held with a 20 point game. Her third three of the day. That shooting percentage slowly starting to climb. You can see what a potent offensive team DePaul can be. Selena Lott will answer though. Seventy four fifty nine DePaul lead. Jordan King scoreless today. She averages ten and a half a game through her non conference portion of her freshman season. Top shot, especially with a shot blocker like Shante Stonewall in your face. Cameron Taylor, two time All Stater in Illinois. Played her high school basketball. Peoria Richwoods High School won a state championship in her junior year. Stonewall goes the other way. 
Ashante Stonewall had one basket in the third quarter, but when they really needed her in the second quarter to, to jumpstart the offense, she was there. Campbell with 13 second quarter points. And that led the way to a 32 point second quarter for the Blue Demons. Megan Duffy moving some players in and off her bench. So now Shante Stonewall. Rattles it in and out. She's now four of six on free throw line today. And that puts her right at her season's average of 18 points per game. Lubo has it knocked away. There's Morris. The Stonewall, the touch, and the score. And that was Stonewall. That was all Stonewall getting her hands on that basketball, that long reach. Those big hands create so many turnovers out of the pressure. For DePaul, Shante Stonewall creating that loose ball and getting it right back to score. DePaul building on that lead, 77-61. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. together, great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. With their team down by 16 and looking a little ragged, Megan Duffy took an early timeout just three minutes into the fourth quarter. Yeah, another turnover for Marquette. That's 23 off of that pressure by DePaul in the backcourt. Duffy calling that timeout to try to make some adjustments, try to figure out how to better crack that DePaul pressure. And Megan Duffy telling us this week that one of the things that she really learned from watching Coach Muffet McGraw at Notre Dame playing for Muffet McGraw was just how well prepared McGraw was for every game and how well she made in-game adjustments. So Megan Tuffy was trying to channel her inner Muffet McGraw, just learning so much 
from Muffet McGraw at Notre Dame. She says that she still keeps in touch with Muffet McGraw. We talk all the time, Megan Duffy says. In fact, she swung by South Bend on her way home from Milwaukee to Ohio for the holidays just to hang out and, and visit with Muffet a little bit. But the things that you learn as a player from a coach like Muffet McGraw, and of course, Megan Duffy was Muffet McGraw's point guard. Muffet McGraw herself a point guard during her college playing days. So those two had a very strong connection that still exists today. On the other side, Doug Bruno has influenced so many coaches yes. throughout his 34 years with DePaul. Megan Duffy in her third year as a head coach, uh, two first two years at Miami, and then came to Marquette taking over for Carolyn Keeger. But another coach that she actually coached under was Kim barnes Rico, who also influenced Duffy in terms of her coaching style. A miss there, and a whistle and a rebound by Lubo. One thing that Duffy uh, learned from Kim barnes Rico was, you know, you work hard, and maybe you don't have all the pieces yet that you really want to have. You can still beat teams. You can still be competitive, and I think this 9-2 and non-conference record we've seen Marquette is a testimony to that. And you talk about not having all the pieces necessarily, and one of the things that Duffy says that she prides herself on with her coaching style is just being able to adjust what she wants to do to her personnel. She's not going to force a certain system on a group of players that that system really doesn't work for. She really tries to tailor what she does to the players that she has, and that's a really smart approach. The miss from Anderson, the rebound to Campbell. Kelly Campbell with four rebounds today. Campbell comes in leading DePaul from her point guard position at six rebounds per game. Paul will use as much of this clock as they desire here. And just that little indecision leads to the travel. Doug Bruno, on the other hand, so well established in his position here that he can really uh, specifically recruit and target certain players. And what do they like here at DePaul? They like players who can shoot the basketball and players who can see the floor. Doug Bruno always talking to us about how he really recruits primarily on visual athleticism. What can a player see? How can a player uh, involved her teammates and, and see the entire floor to make good decisions. These teams coming off of breaks, of course, with the different final exams. DePaul's on a different academic calendar, but yet they wrapped up their conference season uh, or their non-conference season, you know, about a week and a half or so ago, got a little bit of break, and I actually got a, a kick out of uh, Doug Bruno said, you know, yeah, we send, uh, we send the players home, you know, over Christmas break. However, he said, you know, as coaches, there's only three holidays that coaches celebrate. That's Memorial Day, Fourth of July, and Labor Day. Yep. All the main holidays kind of get consumed by basketball, though they too do try to send the players home to enjoy a little bit of the holiday, but still they're, they've got basketball on their minds. Maybe get to a gym while you're at home with your family, just trying to stay in shape and keep your wind. And basketball is such a grueling season. Well, and the other thing that uh, found interesting is DePaul defeated Loyola on December 20th. DePaul practiced here at McGrath Phillips Arena on the 21st and then sent his team away. And he learned that from Pat Summit, the late Pat Summit from Tennessee. DePaul in Tennessee played several times during those years when Tennessee was, you know, at the top of the country. And what Pat Summit wanted to do is she wanted to play DePaul in Chicago right before Christmas break. She said because it was easier to send her kids home from Chicago and then it was from Knoxville, Tennessee, but uh, Doug Bruno kind of said, you know, she enjoyed her time on Michigan Avenue as well, so she would get a little Christmas shopping done here in downtown Chicago. Wow, that was probably one of the main reasons she liked coming here is to do her shopping, get some gifts for Christmas. Just under the five minute mark and a 15 point lead. And there were a lot of good battles here between Tennessee and, and DePaul over the years. And when Candace Parker, who hails from uh, suburban Naperville, came here to play, a packed house here at McGrath Phillips Arena. But that has really been the case with Doug Bruno throughout his entire career, bringing in the best teams in the nation here to DePaul and challenging his programs year after year after year with just brutal, brutal scheduling. One of the reasons that RPI sits at number eight right now for DePaul. 
Held has found Stonewall a few times. Dante <laughs> Stonewall, the big foul. Oh, wait, I, I went down. Somebody pushed me. <laughs> and said it's a turnover. Still the full court pressure. Boy, nothing coming easy, bringing the ball up the floor. Lubo is able to find a spot. Although sometimes you will get those easy cracks in the defense against the full court pressure, and that's what you've got to take advantage of if you're Marquette. Marquette has pulled it within 13. Time running short, though. Coming up on four minutes to play. Ooh, tough rebound. Tia Anderson went up. Sonia Morris will pick up that foul. I thought Anderson got quite a compliment from her head coach, Megan Duffy, when she described Altia Anderson as a, having stonewall athleticism. <laughs> that is a good compliment. There's Altia Anderson, senior. She's come off the bench today, 10 point effort. Old Neagles looking to get this one into single digits. Van Clunen, tough. Campbell holds her ground. I'll talk to Kelly Campbell, the point guard for DePaul. Dean it up on the biggest player on the floor for Marquette. Most of this season, she has been guarding the post players. Yep. She's had some big ones to deal with. There's a left-handed drive from Sonia Morris. Just such a tough player. Kelly Campbell, mentally tough and physically tough as well. And that is why she is always on the floor. It has only six points right now for DePaul, but she does so many other things, four rebounds, four assists, is the glue to this team, runs the offense, will guard any player on the floor that you want. So versatile for the Blue Demons. Really the, the glue to this team and Sonia Morris there make it a strong move to the basket for the Blue Demons. Here's the most remarkable number for Kelly Campbell. The Paul is playing in its 13th game this year, and to this very moment, Kelly Campbell has 12 turnovers That's in 13 amazing. games for somebody who handles the ball as much as she does, senior from Wall, New Jersey. Zero turnovers in Today. this game. Yep. Doug Bruno telling us Kelly Campbell, who's stuck in a trap there. A good time out by Doug Bruno. But we'll get back to Kelly. Actually, Megan has more on Kelly Campbell right now. <laughs> well, Dave, you alluded earlier to Kelly Campbell, the senior guard, only having 12 turnovers to this day. However, she also ranks sixth in the nation in the category of assists. She leads the team with six assists per game, and DePaul head coach Doug Bruno says he wants to lead the nation in assists every year, and that requires everyone to contribute. Right now, the Blue Demons as a whole lead the Big East in assists with 22 a game. That currently ranks third in the nation. Campbell, a huge part of that success. And part of why you, you say that, Megan, it's one of those reasons that Doug Bruno tells Kelly Campbell, you're gonna be a coach someday. And she says, no, no, I'm not. And Doug tells us, well, she is. She doesn't know it yet, but she's going to be a coach someday. Well, one of the things that I was going to say about Kelly is that uh, she is, is a perfectionist, Doug Bruno says. You know, she, she really strives to, to make every right decision. And, and one of the things that Doug Bruno has had to teach her over the years is that it's okay not to be perfect with everything. And uh, although she is so close to it in so many games, with especially with her assist to turnover ratio, and really taking care of the ball with such uh, close perfection, you know, but uh, that's that's been one of the things that she has learned over the course of her career is, is not to be so hard on herself and, and, and uh, to kind of uh, be a little more calm. And that, that calm that she has developed over her career has really transferred to her teammates. You know, think about that. Leading the nation in assist to turnover ratio, and we talked about the turnover numbers. The number of possessions that the Hall has in a game. Mm -hmm. It's not as if you're taking 25 seconds off the shot clock standing on a dribble. Right. As fast as the ball moves, as many shots as this team gets, as often as the ball is in her hands, incredible how well she takes care of the basketball. 
Two free throws from Sonia Morris puts DePaul up over that 80 point mark as they approach their season average of 88 points per game. Good feed inside to Van Clunen. Uses her body well, and Lauren Van Clunen, 19 points. Hell, she doesn't miss those. You see those feet getting set. Lexi Hell knocks down her fourth three of the day. She has a team high, 23 points. She and Shante Stonewall cracked that 20 point mark today for DePaul. The greenest green light in America, Doug Bruno tells us, when his players have an open shot, they are going to take it. No hesitation. And there's Just an open like shot for three. <laughs> and who comes away with it? Campbell. Single digits on the shot clock. And Kelly Campbell will roll it in. Well, if you just happen to turn us on, you see the score, 87-66. Okay, 16th ranked team in the country with that 21-point lead. But you see the 87 points on the board. Would you believe it if I told you that after one quarter today, DePaul had nine points? They've scored almost 80 points in the last three quarters. That is incredible. But this team can turn it on like that, though. Swingola will kick out to Lott. She gets the good look. 18 points for Selena Lott. And now the DePaul bench is being emptied, and Doug Bruno will take a timeout. It'll be just a timeout to roll some people into the lineup. DePaul a minute and 27 seconds away from going 1-0 in a conference and a standing ovation here in the Grant Phillips Arena. Well, those starters earned it. They sustained a tough start, some adversity there, shots not falling, field goal percentage at 19% early on for DePaul. And these players, to their credit, they keep their heads about them, they keep their wits about them, they keep shooting. And eventually DePaul got those shots to fall and, and really got it to roll. Marissa Warren into the game for DePaul. This is Kiki Rimmer with it, a freshman. Warren also a freshman. Jolene Daniger gets her first touch of the day. To Rimmer. Creates the space. Get the bucket. Quickly, Jordan King coast to coast. King's first basket of the day for the freshman from Hananiga High School in Rockton, Illinois. And she has been up and down this season for Marquette, mostly up. Jordan King, a lot of upside to her. Megan Duffy loves her, but she's had a rough game here today. You mentioned just her first basket, one of eight from the field. Megan Duffy having a strong relationship with Jordan King as a point guard for this team. You mentioned that Megan Duffy was a point guard. Megan Duffy saying, you know, I'm going to be hard on my point guards. I'm going to be hard on Jordan King, but I'm also going to show her the love and, and give her the support. She says that's exactly the way Muffet McGraw was as a coach with me. Nadez John, along with Hannah Purcell, comes into the, the Paul lineup. Doug Bruno wanted to make sure that everybody got some minutes here in Big East play. Warren with it. Marissa Warren, one of the promising freshmen for DePaul. Keith Rimmer there with the basketball. We saw a lot of positive contributions out of this group of freshmen during the non-conference season for DePaul. A lot of reasons for optimism for the future for this program as well. Marquette will pick up its third loss this season. Dropped a game to Mississippi State, a game that they had led by five until late in that ball game, had lost in overtime to Northwestern. Mississippi State, the top 10 at the time of the game. Northwestern receiving votes. And Marquette will drop here to the 16th ranked DePaul Blue Demons. So DePaul, after a nine point first quarter, will defeat Marquette 89 to 71. DePaul goes to 11 and two on the season. 80 points in the final three quarters. 
32, 26, and 22 in the final three quarters, respectively. And Doug Bruno will congratulate Marquette. They will see the Golden Eagles in the final game of the Big East season. That's a long ways away, Sunday, March 1st. But for now, it's an 89-71 win. We'll be right back. We'll hear from some folks that have been involved in this game. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Ranked 16th in the country, Andy Paul showed why. 89-71, the final. Standing by with Megan McEwen is Lexi Held. Lexi, after only scoring nine points in the first quarter, your team came out and finished with 89. What was the key to getting your offense going? Well, we knew we were getting every shot that we wanted and that we could take. We just had to trust that they were going to fall. And we work on these shots in practice, so we just trusted that we were going to make shots, but we were mainly focusing on our defense and rebounding because that's what we could control. Not only defensive rebounding, but that also it led to points on the offensive end. You finished with 22 points tonight. What gave you the confidence to shoot the ball? You know, we, we, Bruno always preaches we have the greenest green light in America, and if we don't make the shots that we make, we have our, our teammates have our back to clean up the glass on offense. So there's really nothing to think about when we shoot, which is the best. You beat Marquette in your Big East opener. How big was it to win the first game of the conference schedule? It's a big deal. You know, this is a very tough conference, so we don't take anybody for granted. We know they graduated their five, starting five last year, and it's a new team. But we, they're tough. They've shown that they can compete with anybody in the nation. So we, I'm just glad we got to take care of business today. Congratulations. Thanks, Lex. Thank you. Thank you very much, Megan. Trish, DePaul came, and they did what they've done in the entire season so far. They definitely took care of business. What I'm most impressed with is DePaul faced that adversity of not shooting the, of the basketball. While you heard Lexi say we were getting the shots, we just weren't hitting them. They found other things to do. In the meantime, they started rebounding better. They started playing defense better and really pulled out this game. Marquette, definitely not the ninth best team in this league. They had a nice showing here. I'm looking forward to seeing them play again. For Meg McEwen and Patricia Babcock McGraw, I'm Dave Bernhard. There's your final 89 71 Blue Demons over the Golden Eagles. is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can.